So Mendel determined the laws of inheritance, but in nature, there are plenty of exceptions to his rules, the rules that he discovered. Now, does that mean that Mendel was wrong? No, it just means that the organism that he studied didn't really, the, or the characteristics that he studied in those plants did not include these exceptions. So, so his discoveries and his theories, are they all um, still stand. So let's take a look at what some of these exceptions are. The first exception is the concept of incomplete dominance. That means that a heterozygote exhibits a phenotype that is intermediate between organisms that are homozygotes. So there's really no black and white or this or that situation in a heterozygote. And um, example of, of this is shown here. So we have um, plants. We're again looking at uh, flower color. So flower color in this particular situation is either red or white, but then there's also a pink flower color, which is in between the red and white. So in a heterozygote, the plant is not all together red. It's, it's kind of a lighter shade of red, which is in between these two phenotypes. That's called incomplete dominance. That means this allele that determines the red color is incompletely dominant over the white allele. So you can see also that the naming convention is a little bit different for these because there's really no absolute dominant and recessive relationship. So we have the C stands for color. So an allele, we have a red allele for this gene that determines flower color. We have a white allele. What does that translate? How does that translate into genotype and phenotype? So homozygous big R allele gives you red flowers. Homozygous W allele gives you white flowers. And a heterozygote gives you pink flowers, which is a phenotype that is in between the two. So let's take a look at a cross. So we have pure breeding red and white flowers. And then you put them through a cross. So these would be the gametes produced by the red flower. These would be the gametes produced by the white flower. And then you put them together in a Punnett square and all the F1 progeny are going to be heterozygote and they're all going to be pink. But then what happens when we cross the F1 to itself? So we are crossing two heterozygote. Each of them produce their individual gametes and then when you put them together, you get all sorts of different colors. So you get red, which is homozygous R, you get white, which is homozygous W, and then you get pink, which is heterozygote. So then now what would be the phenotypic? It'll be interesting to see what would be the phenotypic ratios and genotypic ratios in this case. So the phenotypic ratio is, we have four different possibilities um, in terms of the progeny that we get. And one out of four is red. And then pink, we have two out of four that is pink. And then one out of four is white. So the phenotypic ratio is one to two to one. What is the genotypic ratio? One out of four is homozygous dom, uh, big R. Um, one out of four is homozygous white. And then two out of four is heterozygous. So you can see how this is different from the typical, the classical Mendelian genetics. In Mendelian genetics, when we looked at a single gene, the phenotypic ratio that we would get in F2 would be three to one. But when you have an incomplete dominance, you don't get a three to one ratio, you get a one to two to one ratio. And the genotypic ratio is also one to two to one. So when you see a situation like that, keep an eye on it. 
in when uh, you do not get a 3 to 1 ratio, but you get a 1 to 2 to 1 in F2, that's a sign that you're dealing with an exception to Mendelian genetics. Another concept, another exception is the concept of codominance. And this is a situation where there are two alleles, but instead of one of them being completely or partially dominant to, to X, there is no dominant and recessive. Both alleles are fully expressed when they're present in a heterozygote. So don't confuse incomplete dominance with codominance. They're completely different. Now here we have an example. We have cows. There is a um, gene that gives, that is responsible for giving the cow fur color. We have a cow that is white. It's homozygous for the white allele. We have a cow that is brown, which is homozygous for the brown allele. But then in heterozygotes, both of these alleles are fully expressed. It's, you don't get an in-between phenotype. You don't get something, you don't get light brown. You get both white and, and brown. So uh, an example of codominance, actually, another example of, is, is in the blood type inheritance, which is also an example of a phenotype determined by multiple alleles. But before we talk about that, let's talk about how our blood types are determined. You may have heard about blood types A, B, A, B, and O. How is it that we classify those blood types into these groups? Well, it all depends on what kind of a carbohydrate is expressed on the surface of the red blood cells. Cells that express the A type of what's called antigen, they are so individuals that express this type of antigen, this type of carbohydrate on the surface of the blood cells, they have blood A type. Those who express the B type of carbohydrate on their surface, cell surface, or the B antigen, they are the people who have a bleed blood type. There are people who have an AB blood type, which means that they are expressing both the A and B um, carbohydrates on their surface. So this is a good example of codominance as well. Both of these are fully expressed when they're present. Then we also have people who are O blood type, that means on the surface of the blood cells, none of these two types of antigens are expressed on the blood type. So how do we determine what type of blood they are in the lab? Well, people who are group A, people who have A blood type, in their blood, they have antibodies to the other type, which is uh, considered as non-self. So people that have a blood type, they've never, their bodies have never seen anything like this. So therefore their immune system is primed to detect the antigen that is on the surface of a red blood cell of people with blood type B. They are primed to attack it. That's why you can't give a blood from someone with B blood to a person with an A blood. It's vice versa as well. Okay. So conversely, people with group B, people that have B blood type, they have, they are primed to consider the A type of antigens as foreign. And if you give a blood from someone with type A blood to someone with type B, that's going to cause trouble because the, their body is going to attack those new blood cells. Individuals who have an AB blood type, they don't, their body is not primed against any of these because that's part of their body. They're not considered as foreign. Now, people who have O blood type, they are, their body is primed against both A and B antigens. So therefore, this is why we say that group AB, people that have AB blood type, 
are universal acceptors, meaning that you can give them blood from someone with the A blood type or B blood type or O blood type. People with O blood type are universal donors. You cannot get, they cannot get blood from people that are AB, B or A, because if you give them blood from any of these individuals, their body, because of these antibodies, their body is primed to attack them. So now that we understand how blood types work, let's look at the genetics behind it. So this is set up as a Punnett square just to give you an idea of the different types of blood types and the genetics, the genotype behind it. So the blood type, uh, in terms of their genetics, the alleles are written in a little bit differently than other genes. So with um, the gene for blood type, usually it is, you see a big capital I, and then it gets a super, superscript. So this superscript is either A or you get a superscript of B. Okay. Now, the other allele where none of these are expressed, you get a lowercase i. <clears throat> So now let's see what different allele combinations give us. So if you, if a person inherits both of these A alleles, they're, they have blood type A, what are other ways you can have an A blood type? If only one, if you inherit only one A allele from one parent and the other one from a parent that has passed on the O allele, the, the recessive allele. So in this case, A and B are dominant to I. So if A is present, the O blood type phenotype is masked, All right? So A and B are dominant to I. So they can dominant over I. So there's two different ways to have an A blood type, either homozygous A or heterozygous AI. Same thing with B. With B, you could be either homozygous IB or uh, homozygous BB or, homoz or heterozygous IB. What about O blood type? Well, you would have to be homozygous recessive, double I. And then for AB, the AB blood type, this is where you see the codominance because both of these alleles are equally expressed. So for an AB blood type, both alleles are fully expressed. Another exception to Mendelian genetics is a concept called pleiotropy. And the name comes from uh, Greek, uh, the Greek word of pleion, pleion, which means more, and tropos means way. And it uh, happens when one gene influences two or more seemingly unrelated phenotypic traits. So when we talk about blood types or flower color or, or seed shape, these are all these situations. We looked at genes and alleles of a gene that determines only one characteristic. But with pleiotropy, a particular gene can have influence, uh, influence over many different things. So an example is sickle cell anemia. In our bodies, we have genes that, um, a gene that codes for the protein hemoglobin, which is in our blood cells, which carries oxygen. So you can have a normal hemoglobin and you can have a mutant hemoglobin. Now that mutant allele does not form a properly formed hemoglobin and it causes the blood cells to elongate and they just basically don't work and then they also clog the arteries. So anyone who has the recessive hemophilia, uh, sorry, the recessive sickle cell anemia, not hemophilia, they basically um, are very, very sick. 
Now, they're not only sick, but they also give rise to a whole host of different phenotypes that may seem unrelated, but they all are caused because of one gene. So anemia, heart damage, heart failure, kidney failure, paralysis, pneumonia, all of these may seem unrelated, but one gene is mutated and it's causing all these problems. So that's the concept of pleiotropy. One gene causes multiple influences, multiple different seemingly unrelated phenotypic traits. Now on the opposite side, we've got polygenic inheritance. Poly means many and genic refers to the genes. In this case, we're only an example that is given here is skin color. We are only looking at one characteristic, that's skin color. And we know that skin comes in various different tones. Now, the color of the skin is dependent on expression of many separate genes. And depending on what combination of alleles of each gene you get, you get a different skin tone. So therefore, you have many different genes determining one phenotype, which is opposite to pleiotropy, which is one gene influencing many different phenotypes. So make sure you don't, uh, you can distinguish between them.